everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Drew Geraci, owner of District 7 Media, Sony Artisan. No one cares about that. What we want to talk about today is the brand new AMD Threadripper Pro 3975. Ooh, and the dual RTX 3090. I mean, they kind of you know come in this package as well. Um, if you've checked out my build video, you can see I just put together this brand new system. Really loving it. Um, if you want the uh, the TLDR, the new system is absolutely amazing. Coming from the perspective of a cinematographer and photographer and someone who works in some uh, VFX applications, um, this new build is by far the best computer I've ever built. But you don't care about that. You guys want to see the performance. How does it stack up against you know some of the older chips out there or some of the older GPUs? Um, does having dual RTX 3090s really matter? Uh, but I'll show, the, I'll show that and explain it later on. Uh, so if you want to, you can skip ahead. Um, this isn't going to be all about performance numbers. I don't really want to show off all the numbers that actually come with it. What I'd love to do, though, is show you actually how it works in the real world, what it looks like inside of Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, um, how those performance gains are actually utilized. I mean, you guys can see numbers and stats for days, but how does it actually translate um, to actual performance when you're working inside of the program? So I'm going to show that to you. Um, I've got a really awesome test that you probably going to be jaw dropping uh, just how awesome it is so uh, just stick around we're going to start this off with a Cinebench test using the previous workstation that I was using, which was a Dell Precision 7920. It's about five years old, and at the time I uh, purchased it, I believe the retail cost was about $17,000 minus a few rebates here and there. It's using dual 14-core Xeon processors with 192 gigabytes of RAM, NVMe SSDs, and an NVIDIA Quattro P5000. And back in 2017, this was a pretty beefy workstation. As we can see now, it finishes up in about 50 seconds and gets a score of 8,243, which isn't terrible for a computer that's this old. The new system, however, is just something else. Uh, I'm going to play this back in real time just so you can see all of those CPU cores working in tandem with the GPUs uh, to deliver an incredible result. The final time, which is 17.3 seconds to complete, uh, which means this new computer, when it comes to the Cinebench performance test, uh, is 2.83 times faster or a 283% gain in performance against my previous workstation. This is pretty damn amazing and uh, it makes me really happy. So let's talk about how it works in real 3D applications. For the next test, I'll be using Blender and a pre-made model. The first thing I noticed when I opened up the application in my previous workstation is that the movement inside the modeler is fluid at times, but it also starts to stutter and lag a little bit uh, when I move closer to the model. It's not bad by any means, but it's definitely noticeable when you start working with it. Uh, next, let's see how fast it renders. This is real time, and to render a single frame took approximately five seconds. All right, that's not bad. Let's see how the new system performs. Opening up Blender now on my new computer, it seems very similar in terms of motion performance. Um, however, I do notice the closer I get to the model, there isn't any stuttering or lag, which means I can move freely around my workspace um, without any hindrance, and it's, it's pretty damn awesome. Um, it's very fluid and very easy to move around. All right, so let's see how it renders. Unsurprisingly, the new workstation renders the same frame in 1.19 seconds. Uh, that's 4.2 times quicker than my previous workstation with a performance gain of 420%. Uh, this means I can render out 15 seconds of animation or 360 frames in about 7 minutes. On my previous workstation, it would take an eye-watering 30 minutes to do the exact same number of frames. This means I'm saving time on rendering, modeling, and delivering content to my clients. It's absolutely remarkable. It also means I'm saving money, so this is great. Now our next test is going to involve DaVinci Resolve, and this by far is one of the programs I use the most, so there's a lot that's going on inside DaVinci Resolve um, that hopefully is really going to benefit from the use of the dual RTX 3090s and the new Threadripper 3975. Um, the first thing I want to show you, and this is going to be the most, I will say, uh, revealing of you know the system and how it actually performs, is uh, doing a denoiser test. If you've ever done denoising in the past, um, whether you're on a multi-core system or multi-GPU system, you usually Usually run into a lot of slowdowns. The playback performance is usually stuttered, and at the most you'll probably get anywhere between one to five frames per second, uh, really just depending on what you're using. Um, previously in the past I was using the NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, and I could probably get somewhere around three to four frames per second, and at the time that was pretty damn good. Um, but now I want to show you um, in real time what it actually looks like utilizing a 4K clip with neat uh, video, uh, noise reduction version 5. 
put on um, and then utilizing the, all these new system specs. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to apply our neat video noise reduction to our clip here. And this is a 4K clip. It's uh, a shot from the uh, Sony a7S III. Um, so it's kind of got a, a nasty codec, which is H.264. Um, so usually for this kind of playback, you'd probably get maybe just um, two to three frames per second. So I'm gonna go in, build a noise profile. I'm gonna come in here and try to find the noisiest area that I can. Actually, let's do it this way. Okay, 3.5%. I'm going to build a profile. Great. It adjusts, and it is filtered. The, the next thing I want to do is I want to show you the performance that we're actually getting out of this. And what we're doing is using the GPUs only. And even though I'm having the GPU and the CPU available, um, if you go to optimize settings, um, I'm going to run this test and see what happens. <laughs> So now that we've done our performance optimization test, you can see that the best combo is the GPU only with both of my 3090 RTXs, and we get a whopping 24.5 frames per second for 4K footage. That is absolutely insane. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept these combinations. I'm gonna click OK. We'll click Apply. Let's see what playback looks like. almost getting a full 24 frames per second as it's working. Um, as you can see that the VFX is turned on, it is absolutely working, and uh, it's just astounding. I've never been able to scrub through any noise reduction footage and been able to do any kind of playback at real time, which is at 24 frames per second right now, on a timeline. It's bananas, and this is what just makes the system so amazing. This is exactly what I wanted from my editor. That way I can come back, go through all of my footage. If I want to add noise reduction, I can. I can see every single detail um, in real time and not have to worry about if the, the content that I'm creating um, works. And I think this is absolutely insane. I don't have to optimize the media. I don't have to do anything. Um, it just renders it on the fly. And that to me is the, the sign of a really, really great workstation. Uh, the previous workstations obviously I've been using, as I said before, really would only get maybe uh, two to four frames per second. And in this uh, instance, we're getting full 24 frames per second in playback um, with the noise reduction added. So I think that's just a testament to how powerful, um, you know, obviously the, the two 3090 um, graphics cards are. This is just absolutely insane. Uh, the next test what we're going to do is showcase, you know, how does this actually play back 8K raw footage, 8K compressed footage, and how it works in the actual editing phase. First one we're going to work with is the, the red helium 8K footage. Um, this was shot last year. And uh, what I'm going to do is just plop it down here on the timeline. You're going to see that we are in a true 8K timeline right now. And the footage that we are editing with is true 8K resolution at the same time. So uh, the first thing I want to notice is I'm just going to go ahead and just play this back as it is. No problem. The computer is just playing back. No issues. This will go on for eternity. It's absolutely a dream to work with um, just as a single stream of 8K footage. No problems here whatsoever. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we add a second layer of 8K to our footage. So I've gone ahead and added our second layer here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the transparency of this so you know that you're seeing both shots at the same time. Here we go. Increase that. Look at that. All right. Go ahead and hit play. Again, our first track is getting 24 frames per second. Our second track is also getting 24 frames per second with no stuttered playback or anything. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, that's great. So we're running two streams of 8K footage, no problem, on an 8K timeline. Let's go for three. So I'm going to bring another clip down. Drop this down. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to reduce the opacity on this just a little bit. That way we can see all three streams of 8K video playing at the same time. First stream, good. Second stream, good. Third stream, good. Wow, 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 wow. 
So there you have it. We've got three streams of 8K footage being played back at the same time concurrently, and there's absolutely no playback issues. I can even scrub through this in real time, and it looks absolutely beautiful. We can play it, and it plays back um, at its true 24 frames per second. For our next example, I'll be using some footage I shot with the new Sony Alpha 1, which is highly compressed footage. I've already got a clip selected. I'm going to drag this down into my timeline. Playback, 24 frames per second, no problem. You can see that we're on a true 8K timeline right now, which is great. The file that we're using is a true 8K resolution uh, clip. And the playback just looks absolutely beautiful. There's absolutely no slowdown. Everything plays in real time, not a problem. Let's go ahead and duplicate this and get our second layer of 8K. Do the same thing we did with the other test. I'm going to drag down the opacity a little bit, stagger this out, and see what we get. Now, the compressed files do seem to have a lot more stuttered playback than the raw files do, and that's usually just due to how um, the design is of the codec. And these uh, these long op formats are usually very heavy uh, on the processing side, so this really explains why the performance isn't as great as, say, the red footage. Um, so we can only get about one and a half streams of 8K footage with the Sony Alpha 1 using that type of codec. Um, but ultimately, that's still really great because I was having issues playing it back on my other computer, um, whereas it wouldn't even play back in real time. So being able to have one and a half streams of um, usable 8K compressed footage is still really, really good. Um, and if I were using this on a 4K timeline or even a 1080p timeline, you wouldn't see any of this stutter playback. So I'm actually going to change that right now. So you can see what it looks like. We're going to change to a 4K timeline. There we go. We can get two streams of the 8K and 4K without any issues whatsoever. It looks really cool. Um, I'm going to add one more element to this to see if we can get three streams to play in 4K, which shouldn't be an issue. Reduce the opacity a little bit. We got our first stream, our second stream. And when that third stream kicks in, we do get some stuttered playback, which isn't wonderful, but at the same time, being able to utilize um, highly compressed footage like the Sony Alpha 1 um, on a timeline and three different layers on top of each other is pretty damn impressive. So i um, really excited because my other computer wouldn't even be able to handle this right now. Um, so even though we're seeing um, some stuttered playback, the fact that we can actually still see what's going on is pretty remarkable. Next, when it comes to the exporting of 8K footage, the render time is pretty damn impressive. So I'm going to go through here really quick, set up our parameters. I'm going to be saving all of this stuff to an NVMe RAID, so it's going to be really fast. I'm going to be using the H.265 codec, using the uh, NVIDIA CUDA cores as our encoder, and I'll be leaving everything else as it is over here alone. So I'll click Add to Render Queue and we'll do a render all. Now this is only 30 seconds of footage, we'll see how long this takes. So our final export time was 43 seconds. Switching gears, we're going to move over to Adobe Premiere Pro. This is the latest version that's come out as of 4-2-2021. And I've uploaded the footage that we were using inside of DaVinci Resolve, which was some of our 8K Red Raw footage. I'm going to go ahead and do the playback on this. And this is on a 8K timeline. We are using 8K footage, as you can see uh, right here. And, uh, yeah, um, I have to say I've been using... Um, I think DaVinci Resolve a lot more than Premiere lately, but it's great to see that the playback inside of Premiere Pro is really good. Um, I've already tested this out, obviously, and there are um, up to two and a half layers of 8K in full resolution, which is pretty impressive for Premiere because if you've ever worked with Premiere, um, it's been a little buggy as of late, uh, but I think they're doing a great job putting uh, you know more performance into the actual application. Uh, we can actually do a lot more now without having stuttered playback, and um, it's a little more stable, I think. I've only run into one error while actually editing it within the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, which is usually pretty good because normally when I'm editing with Adobe, I probably get an error every, I don't know, 10 minutes. <laughs> so as you can see here, we've got two layers of 8K footage. It's playing back beautifully right now. 
Um, and that's that's really nice. I'm gonna add one more just for fun. And you can see that it kind of starts degrading uh, after we start playing it. Let me change the opacity real quick. So we go from our first to real-time playback to our second layer in real-time playback. And then once we hit that third layer, it does start to drop frames, uh, which isn't bad. I mean, it's pretty much on par with what's going on inside of DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is probably playing it back a little bit smoother um, with full three lanes of 8K um, footage. But at the same time, um, this is pretty impressive for Premiere. Uh, the fact that we are running at full resolution without any issues, is it's pretty remarkable. I'm going to drop this down to a quarter and see what the playback is like. Yep, getting smooth playback here. And smooth at a quarter. So if we do drop down the resolution, we do get that option to play the higher resolution content on a higher resolution timeline, which is really wonderful. The biggest downside to using Adobe Premiere Pro is that the application doesn't actually utilize both RTX 3090s and it doesn't utilize all of the cores in the processor. So it's kind of unfortunate because I've applied a video effects which just is a simple alpha glow which is what we did inside of DaVinci Resolve and then I've gone through and I've just added some basic color grading to this. And what happens is if you look at playback now, let me make this not look so crazy, is that it is super slow and pretty stuttered. It's dropping frames quite frequently and there's really only two things added to this footage. In fact, I'm playing it back now and it's not even operating. So this is pretty unacceptable. You can see that it's taking a long time to pick up and um, I used to really enjoy working with uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, but at the same time, they just haven't kept up with technology. The fact that this program isn't even utilizing all of the system resources, it's kind of sad. So we come back to the main editor here. You can see that we're pretty much dropping every single frame in an 8K timeline. Um, comparatively, if we were doing this in the Resolve, there wouldn't be any issues whatsoever. We'd be playing this back perfectly. So Premiere's still got some stuff to work on. Next, we're going to go ahead and check out what the render times are inside of Premiere Pro. Utilizing the same codecs we were using before inside of DaVinci Resolve. Just put this on our desktop. And hit export. Uh, render time wise, uh, I'm not really too impressed with how fast things are rendering. The The same 8K footage of, of this render took almost three times as long to render, which is really unfortunate. These are the final render results from both my new system and my previous workstation utilizing both Resolve and uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, as you can see, there's definitely some stark differences uh, between the two systems. The newer system is just absolutely insane when it comes to rendering, um, especially anything that has VFX or noise reduction in it. Um, what's really surprising to me, though, is that the 8K um, just standard RAW outside of DaVinci Resolve on both my old workstation and current workstation, there's not a lot of separation. It's almost um, pretty much on par for one for one, which is kind of disappointing. I was kind of hoping to have a little bit faster render time with the 8K RAW inside of DaVinci Resolve. Um, but if you do look at it from the Premiere Pro side of things, um, you know, it took one minute and 53 seconds on my new machine just to render out a clean um, 8K RAW clip with no effects or VFX. And in Premiere Pro, it took five minutes and 18 seconds. That's crazy it's like almost two and a half times longer inside of premiere pro um, it just goes to show you know which programs are actually utilizing the hardware it's obvious that adobe isn't um, utilizing all the hardware and resolve is doing a much better job mitigating and managing both my dual graphics cards as well as all of that uh, beautiful cpu usage um, so overall i'm really impressed uh, the render times have sped up drastically um, and you know i couldn't really be happier with this new build the last thing I want to talk about is the overall temperature performance of the new build. Um, I had at least a dozen of you guys ask me about thermals and temps, so here are the results. Uh, keep in mind this entire system is 100% natural airflow, so there's no liquid cooling at all. For idle temps, the CPU averages 35 to 41 degrees Celsius, depending on how cold my office is. I like to keep it a little chilly. Um, while under a full load with 32 cores running at 100% at 4.2 gigahertz, the temperature clocks in at 68 to 71 degrees Celsius. The most surprising thermals come from the dual 3090s as their idle temps are 33 degrees Celsius, and while under a full GPU load, only top out at 63 to 65 degrees Celsius. 
In contrast, my previous system, which is liquid cooled, has an average idle temp of 32 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius, and while under a full load comes in at 63 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius, depending on how long it's been running. Overall, for a strictly air-cooled system, I'm really satisfied with the results. That'll wrap it up for this time, but if you guys have any questions or if you guys have any comments about the build or anything you want to see, go ahead, drop them down below in the comments. And as always, if you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and as always, happy shooting. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Have a great day.